singing in the rain. <laughs> you are my lucky star. Not quite as grotesque as that, but mm. what a, what a, isn't this, uh, isn't this like the most charming movie? Almost the most charming? It's movie. very charming. It's very charming. It's, I would call it sparkling. Mmm. Like the wine we drank. Tell us about the wine. Um, well, I thought it was a perfect, just lovely and um, light, and Nick Hedman captured it mm. in his, what in did his he say? discourses on the wine. <laughs> uh, he said it was something something like it was light and fun. It was. Mm -hmm. It was light, light bodied and fun. And um, you I like don't, something I don't generally, I do. I, I don't, I don't really like champagne that much. I like it, but I don't. I haven't found a whole lot that I that I really go, ooh, that's really good. Um, usually it tastes really sharp to me. It has a lot of bubbles. And this one, I thought the bubbles were pretty tame, and I thought the um, flavor was right there. It was like a like a very pleasant apple, sparkling apple cider without the intense sweetness. So mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it the next day. And a mm. mimosa as well. It's mm. perfect for a mimosa. Mm. So I hope you enjoyed it. It was, um, it was just meant to be light and sparkling and, and sweet. Yeah, I sure enjoyed it. And we enjoyed it for Mother's Day mimosas the next day. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yeah, perfect. Tell us about the movie. Yeah. Um, so different from the last one we watched. It was. It was. Talk and to yet, me about, like, how do you compare the two? Well, in principle, uh, there's a good kind of movie critical principle uh, that's that I've found helpful. It's It um, was... Put forward by a guy um, in the 18th century, Goethe, who said, um, "Before you say whether or not you like something, first you have to ask yourself what is it trying to do, and then you ask yourself how well did it do that, and then on the third question can be whether or not you thought it was worth doing." Okay. And I think probably. Most you have to of, answer them in that order. Well, I mean, you don't have to, but what it does is it, most of us cut to question three. You're mm -hmm. like, nah, not my thing. Yeah. But if you can ask her, ask questions one and two before you get to three, you'll find, I think, your palette for what your enjoyment for movies can be. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was trying to do a set of things that... Um, Singing in the rain is <laughs> not trying to do. Mm -hmm. But if you figure out what it's trying to do, and then you assess how well is it doing that, then you can find all this, I think, really pleasure in watching something. And then you can say, well, it's still not my thing. Yeah. But, not a lot of singing and dancing movies these days. Like, you know, dancing. Well, La La Land. I think that was an, mm -hmm. I think that was the return. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it was there was a dearth of those. I mean, we just haven't had them for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was like Newsies and Flash Dance. I mean, you get like one uh, mm -hmm. every five years or mm -hmm. something. But um, Kara, my cousin-in-law, anticipated where the pivot was, how these two related, and that was exactly in the uh, physical virtuosity of those performances. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. quite like she anticipated, uh, fight scenes, as you probably know, are choreographed. Mm -hmm. And there are four fight choreograph uh, choreographers, choreographers mm -hmm. whose job are basically to lay out all the punches and... And I think we can all agree that if, if for no other reason, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon takes the cake on the physical virtuosity of these performances, especially mm -hmm. all the wire work, right? Mm -hmm. Wire work is cool, but mm -hmm. it's, it's cool to see their bodies performing with yeah. that wire work. Hey, let's talk. Creed also. Oh, physical performances? Boxing. Yeah, is like dancing. It is. It is. Yes. Yeah. Good. That's a good the connection. The feet and the and mm -hmm. the uh, and the hands mm -hmm. have to be connected mm -hmm. in a in a in a very concentrated and cooperative way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the difference I think here with singing in the rain is that what we're enjoying is there's nothing of the competition in it at all, mm -hmm. which is what you get with Creed, you Crouching Tiger, right? And what you get in most athletic performances mm -hmm. is. Um, the, the pleasure, the virtuosity of watching like a graceful body in motion shooting right. threes or whatever. Right. But here you're just getting pure physical performance for the sake of physical performance. I think that one of the sources of joy in this 
is the discovery and the audacity of a body that is really well made doing a well made performance. Hmm. I want to say, not to get too theological about this, but this is like harkens back to the very good body of Genesis 1 and 2. Like pitch perfect, no fall. We have this kind of vision of like, oh my gosh, look at that amazing body doing amazing things. Would that we were all made like that. Wouldn't that be amazing? And we could take pleasure in that. And I think there's joy in actually the the reminder of, of, of a body well-made doing well-made things. Sounds plausible. <laughs> Whereas we saw uh, another kind of joy in the mission, mm. but that's a post-Genesis 3 joy, mm. which is joy after the fall. Mm. Do you hear the difference in those two things? One is the recovery of... A body well made from the very beginning. The second is a body redeemed. Mm -hmm. And those are different kinds of joys, I think. Is that too intense? Who cares? Yeah, that's really intense. Let's watch, um, t speaking of joy, let's watch, this is a perhaps not obvious scene from this movie. This is actually my favorite dance scene. It comes right at the beginning when um, Gene Kelly's character says, uh, dignity, always dignity. And here we see what he really did was with his buddy Cosmo played the vaudeville circuit, which is the trashiest, humiliating, humiliating performances. And watch how they he both undercuts himself, right? Because they're just being goofballs in these giant, um, uh, loud clothes doing silly, uh, slapstick performances. But the virtuosity of that same performance again outstrips his own um, undoing do you see so we, we take pleasure in the fact that he's he's doing better even than he lets on is Cosmo and I were ready to embark on a dance concert tour and I have to say this Donald O'Connor to me takes the cake in this mm. whole movie and so whereas Gene Kelly is always the smiling beautiful man uh, Donald O'Connor plays the cad the joker while he's performing alongside with him. So watch what happens when he, he accidentally has his violin bow stolen by Gene uh, Kelly's character, and he's trying to grab it back. Oh, it gives me such pleasure. We played the finest symphonic halls in the country. There's a fiddle ready for love. I can jump over the moon up above. There's a fiddle and ready for love. So, what a treat. Thank you for going with us on this little um, adventure down musical lane. I will throw in this last bit. Um, Jeff Weber asked us, how are we making decisions? And I am going to now put the answer and have you guess from now on what our next choice will be. We have decided that we are picking, we are doing genre humping. Humping. I know, different. <laughs> genre hopping. And what no, we're, thank you. And so we're going to, what we're doing is, 
in, in a sense to work out this principle of like, what's it like to try out a movie in a genre that I don't care about and try it out? So we're trying to pick great examples of those. But every time we move, we have a connection uh, between those two movies. And Kara guessed it this last time, which mm -hmm. is physical virtuosity and uh, the pleasure that that brings in different contexts. Mm -hmm. Next week's movie... I am happy to say, and I think will be a stumper, at least initially, for why we chose this one. Please just show up. There we are. Is True Grit, which is our Coen Brothers Western style movie choice for this week. Mm -hmm. And there is some kind of connection between it and singing in the rain? What? What's what are we drinking? We're drinking Undaunted. It's a Washington State wine produced in Horse Heaven Hills. It's an Appalachian in Washington State. 2018. This is 10.99 at Whole Foods. I didn't see it at Full Wine and More. I also went there today. Um, but 10.99 Whole Foods, and I'm sure our Washington friends could probably find this at a lot of different. Uh, retailers so if you're free saturday night join us at nine otherwise just make sure you watch the movie by let's say sunday next week and post if you can we love your comments and we will see you on the other side bye-bye <laughs>